Hi, I'm Mike Oner, the Ingroup in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm going to go over some of the records that I'm bringing home today to add to my personal collection. Some of these are records that just came out. Some of this stuff is uh, from collections that I bought even two years ago that I'm just now getting around to getting to. The first one I wanted to talk to you guys about is Chet Baker and Art Pepper's Picture of Heath. Blue Note Tone Poet under the Pacific Jazz label. This is a title that I was actually probably the most excited about getting this uh, this year. It's known by its much, much better cover and better title, Playboys. A record that has been very elusive for me. I have been trying to find a mint copy of this record my whole life and I never have. This is so far the best copy that I've been able to find. The cover is not totally uh, ring wear, which is normally what you get, but it's got seam splits. You know, the vinyl is... Yeah, it's a copy that I wish, you know, I wish I was able to upgrade, but it just hasn't happened. But legend goes, Hugh Hefner threatened to sue him for that cover, so they switched to this cover. The reason I'm showing you guys this record first is because it's been a little bit of the bane of my existence. When I first started shipping this out, first record I played, the minute I popped it off the, you know, I think this came out of pallet, the minute I popped it off the palette, put it on. Fantastic. The World Pacific stuff, Pacific Series stuff, a lot of times it is extremely difficult to get clean as I just showed you guys. So I've never really had a nice, really minty, clean, all analog, you know, good audiophile version of this record. So I was looking forward to it. Get it on, play it, wonderful, no problem. Ship out a bunch of copies. People had pre-ordered, people had bought it. A lot of people like me were looking forward to it. I started getting emails, you know, this record's defective. It's skipping. It's skipping. You know, generally when I get these skipping type issues, it's always turntable specific, but it was a little bit more than normal. Started taking them back, got every single one back, played it. No skip on my turntable. Moved it to the two other turntables I have sitting in the sound room. No skip. Unfortunately, this record is cut in a way that is very hot, and because it is cut very hot, a lot of turntables are having difficulty tracking it. Now, I don't think it's a cartridge alignment issue. I think it's more of a compatibility issue. You know, the mass tone arm uh, correlation, I think, is probably the issue with this. Turntables that are not really good trackers, cartridges and tone arms that are not really good trackers, I think are causing the problem. I haven't added on any of mine. So, I will say this. If you get this record and you're having skipping issues and you don't want to address the turntable situation, but you want this record, do not buy another one because it is going to be the exact same issue. I've had a few people that are buying them and I'm trying to email them like, and tell the customers like, look, this is what's going on. If you don't like it, don't buy another one. That's not going to fix the problem. You know, I've got some people that are trying to just buy it and return it two or three times. And it's like, look, you're not going to get a copy. So yeah, that's what it is. Kevin Gray has cut records really hot in the past and has had this issue. Uh, the Nora Jones Come Away With Me is one that comes to mind. I used to have tracking issues with that back in the day when it was in print and sold, you know, at high velocity, like a new tone poet. But I don't know. It's, uh, I'm trying to think. It, it was never this bad, but this is more of all at once. But yeah, it's a great title. It's just a trackability issue, you know, and what's weird about it. And the reason I say, I think it's a compliance issue is you'll get cheaper turntables like audio Technica's that have pre-mounted cartridges on them that don't have a problem tracking this, but you got to think about it. Audio Technica makes the cartridge, the tone arm, you know, they're made with solid compliance. But when you get a lot of these tables that Maybe it's a turntable that's using an aftermarket Ortofon or aftermarket, you know, the different tone arms. There's sometimes you get compliance issues or you're now you're on the absolute outer end of what you should be compliance wise. But yeah, uh, Art Pepper, Picture of Heath. Love it. Fantastic record. Uh, really early on. It's not to the same level audio wise as, you know, a well recorded Blue Note. But for that era of record, I've never heard it sound that great. I'm super thrilled about that record. Okay, so going through the $100,000, 
DJ promo collection I started showing you guys a year ago, and you can see a lot of the stuff coming from this vi these videos lately has been from that collection. <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'm a stickler. I do not like to bring, I'm going to show you all these at once. I do not like to bring records that are worth nothing home unless they're super mint. Like they got to be musically something I want to listen to, right? But they got to be super mint because I just don't want to have VG copies of worthless records sitting on my shelf. It's a spacing issue. I'm not going to play them if they're not super clean anyways. But one thing that has been extremely clean and extremely difficult to find clean has been Rod Stewart records. You do not find really mint Rod Stewart records. Maybe the later 80s stuff, but the, the, the records that everybody wants. For instance, every picture tells a story complete. You know, the cover's not all knackered, it's not torn. But in this collection was almost an entire run of mint white label promos. So, fantastic. I looked on my shelf. I got some of the Vertigo Rod Stewart stuff. I've got the audio file, uh, Blondes Have More Fun. You know, I had a couple of records on my shelf. It was like four or five, and I like Rod Stewart. You know, there's a lot of iterations. You know, you got Disco Rod, you got Faces. You, you know, there's a lot of error of Rod that is fantastic. But I've never really been able to add it to my shelf because it's always a couple of dollar record, you know, for instance... Atlantic Crossing, just not in good shape. But look at this. Every one of these records was just in fantastic shape. And I'll run through them. Most of them are white label promos. There's Every Picture Tells a Story. Never a Dull Moment. That's a white label promo. Cover, not an ounce of wear on it. You know, the, uh, what do we got here? Smiler. That's also a white label promo. So this was fantastic because I was able to pretty much have a whole ready to go Rod Stewart collection. Yeah, Footloose and Fancy Free in the shrink. Not a promo, but you know, perfect shape. Rod Stewart faces live. This is not a promo, but all comes from the same collection and from a guy who pretty much just stockpiled these things and I'm pretty sure he never played any of them. So. Here's a record that, uh, have you ever seen one this clean? I mean, it's not an expensive record. Sing it again, Rod, you know, with the uh, whiskey glass, the scotch glass cover. No wear, no damage, no tears. This is a white label promo. Another promo. Let's see, A Night on the Town, Rod Stewart. This is just labeled as a promo. It's not actually a promo, uh, yeah, it's not a promo label. And then Gasoline Alley. Not a promo. Actually, there's about four or five more I meant to grab, but uh, you know, I don't know what I did with them. They might be in another box, but I cleaned them and they're ready to go. But yeah, I figured I'd show that as one. This collection has been nice because not only are there a lot of like high dollar grails in the collection, but there's also a lot of this type of stuff where you're getting a full run of an artist in typically they're the promos and or like mint condition near mint records. The reason I bought the collection and I paid as much as I did. Okay, this I purchased on eBay six, seven months ago. That is uh, the Phil Woods Septet pairing off Donald Byrd, uh, Philly Joe Jones. Fantastic record. I think this was done as a uh, Analog Productions series title as well, part of the uh, 25 Monos. I think it was. I'm almost positive it, it was. But uh, yeah. Drill, drill mark on the record and on the cover. I bought these, most of these jazz records I was buying in the midsummer came from one guy who just had the most spectacular first era. You know, everything. It wasn't his collection. He had purchased this collection. I'm not sure where he got it from. But everything was just beautiful, clean. And I really loaded up from this guy. Okay, so, and I still have that jazz collection I'm going through, which is where this actually came from. Check this out. Blue Note 1501, the first Blue Note in the 1500 series. 
This is Miles Davis, volume one, and this is a true first pressing all around. Picture frame cover, correct cover, right address, correct label, Lexington, flat edge. This is the one, the vinyl is, you know, like 250 grams. It's ma massively heavy. Uh, it's got a little bit of play on it, but it's a solid VG record. You know, it's a, it's a nice record. And it's a record I've had in my collection in later iterations, but I've never had this. Actually, the cover is upside down too. The back, excuse me, the back. So you can see it was placed on there upside down. But very nice, I'm excited about that. Very cool. So this actually was part of that jazz collection that I brought into the store. So yeah, add that to the collection. Ooh boy, we got some, some rock heavies coming up. And uh, Donald Bird's uh, Fuego. This is a first pressing stereo copy, West 63rd. Uh, this actually is like near mint, strong near mint. But this was actually a DJ copy. It was stamped on the back there. Beautiful condition. I don't think you can ever see these on the camera. I don't know why I show them, but yeah. Really clean, beautiful double deep groove West 63rd. First pressing stereo. I think I have a uh, really nice clean Liberty of this that I'm gonna put at the store. But uh, yeah, Fuego. Okay. Also from that same promo collection, Agitation Free. I hear people talking about this a lot. Never really listened to it. This is actually a really good record. I had a good, I played it once at the store. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, that's worth bringing home, giving it a little bit more of a listen to. Uh, let's see. But, uh, you know, it goes, goes for a few bucks, a few hundy. But really good, really good record. Actually, I'm probably going to listen to that again today. Some more jazz records. This was actually one of those eBay records I purchased a while back. This was one of the few records I purchased from that gentleman that actually came a little overgraded. Uh, extremely difficult record to get. Benny Green with Art Farmer. First pressing of this. And I got to weigh this record when I get a chance. I can't even describe to you how heavy this damn record is. Oh man, it's like 250. It's heavy as can be. Uh, this is actually one of those early prestige titles that it was actually uh, done by Plasticite. So, flat edge, Plasticite. Good record. Uh, Art Farmer. Difficult to get this cover really clean from what I've found over the years. They tend to show where that yellow just didn't hold up well. It's not bad. It's drilled. A lot of the records were drilled in that collection, but... Again, I've been trying to make a complete, you know, run at the uh, 7000 series for a while now, the 7000 to 7100. I almost got the whole, you know, originals. Between OJC's reissues and that kind of thing, I have the, you know, the full run. There's a couple of, uh, there might be one or two that I'm missing, but for the most part, I have the run, but I'm trying to have a full run of the originals. And, uh, you know, I'll probably at that point in time, I think I'm down to the point where I'm keeping like the original and OJC and at least one of the audio file versions. If it's a title that's been done multiple times by say Analog Productions, I'll keep the different iterations just to have them. But yeah, so check this out from the promo. <laughs> and as a record store owner, it says, you know how rare some of these records are. The Rod Stewart, you know, a lot of people are looking at that and they're probably laughing like, Rod Stewart, why is he getting excited about Rod Stewart? It's because how hard it is to find them clean. Do you know how hard it is to find this album at all? Peter Frampton comes alive. This must have been like, again, I wasn't alive when this came out, but in the 90s, this was everywhere. But this is a record that must have just been party, party, partied with. Uh, who knows what happened? By the 80s, maybe people were like cutting lines off of this thing. But it's never, never clean. But this is a just stone mint white label promo. I have the mobile fidelity. I have some versions of this in my collection, but I've never been able to find like a true mint original of it. They're just difficult to find. So 
I got that and I saw, I'm like, I was excited. Now there was the full run of Peter Frampton. God, I'm thinking to myself, do I really need, you know, a promo of Baby I'm In You? I, I don't think so, but I don't know, maybe. Okay, another thing I really enjoy getting for comparison stakes, and I always grab them when I get them, is there's been some tone poets of titles that uh, are known to be good sounding records. They don't go for a ton of money. That's this uh, Gil Levins, old bottle, new wine. Doesn't go for a ton of money. Known to be good music, known to sound good, but they're not easy to find, actually. So when I see some of these titles, I pick them up. Uh, and this is one of them. This came in that jazz collection. Not a ton of money. But it's one of those titles, if you go on Discogs and pull this up, you know, you're not going to find 50 copies of this thing available, and they're typically not in very good shape. So when I get them in good shape, I try to, I try to grab them. Now, this is a record I was familiar with, the uh, Gil Evans. This is a record I was not familiar with, because it just has one of those titles that uh, wouldn't have been something I would have grabbed if I didn't know already. And that's uh, the Gerald Wilson Big Band. Big Band for me is normally something that, you know, it's not my thing. When I see it, I kind of just, okay, I'll take a pass. The cover's cool, but it's something I've never seen. Never, ever have seen this in the wild. And I find, I see more Pacific jazz records out here being on the West than I think most people probably see on the East Coast. And it's still something I've never seen out here. And this is not an easy record to get. I've never seen this in the wild. If you go on Discogs, I think when I looked last, there wasn't one of these things available for sale. Not one. It doesn't go for a ton of money. But uh, yeah, the Tone Poets just, on both of these, decimate either of you know, both of these. But I wouldn't have known that had I didn't have a copy to listen to. So yeah, I grabbed them. Okay, these last two. Interesting records. First one is Eden's Island. This is Eden Aves. This was on Delphi, Richie Valens label. This is the music of an enchanted isle. He wrote Nature Boy. That was his big claim to fame. And it was like picked up by all the crooners. All the crooners covered it. Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra. It was a song that was picked up by the crooners and they ran with it. I was never, I mean, it's okay. I don't think it's the greatest. Not, and I love the crooners, but it's not one of my favorite songs. But obviously he did really well with it. But he did this album, The Music of an Enchanted Island. Now look at this guy. Look at, I mean, this guy's like right out of central casting, right? Could have got a part as Jesus and probably anything he, uh, he submitted his resume to. This is a really difficult and rare record to find. It goes for a ton of money. Probably because it's so rare. But this is essentially trying to describe, you'd have to listen to it. It's kind of exotic, like Martin Denny, Arthur Lyman, but it's also like a lot of spoken word poetry, kind of like, I'm trying like, maybe like beatnik type poetry. It's really bizarre. Okay, so here's a stereo copy, and here's a mono copy. So I got both of them in that promo collection. So it's like, all right, we'll keep both of them. It's good. I love, I love the Exotica. And one of the things that's cool, let's see which one that is. This particular copy. Now this guy died, I want to say, in the mid-90s. This one's actually autographed. By Nature Boy. But this is the only record he did in his lifetime. And, uh, I mean, he lived 80, 90 years old. I mean, he lived a while. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, you know, I enjoy it. Like I said, it's kind of just Martin Denny with, with poetry over it, you know, spoken word. But that cover, I don't know. Maybe it's the cover I like more than anything with this. I look at this and it's just like, <laughs> the cover, every, this cover is just awesome. Him, the typesetting, the bamboo in the back, just, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So I got both versions it only came out twice it came you know there was never a reissue within its era you know what i mean it came out as a reissue decades later but when it came out it came out mono it came out stereo and that's it we didn't see it again for decades so it's pretty rare
But yeah, that is uh, that is it. And again, the stuff I think I'm most excited about here is not the jazz titles, but for the Rod Stewart stuff. Clean, near mint, mint, white label promo, untouched Rod Stewart records. So yeah. All right, guys, check us out online at theingroove.com. Until next time.